And in that language, God has preserved His Word perfectly for us. He's preserved His Word perfectly throughout time, and we have access to that Word today. And it's found in the King James Version of the Bible. And we only use this because we believe that this is without error. This is inerrant, that there are no mistakes in here. We don't need to access or reference any other books that might call themselves a holy Bible because they are actually full of errors. And this book is not. So this is what we use. This is the only book that we use. And we base our faith as Christians, and every Christian should be doing this, off of the Word of God, off of what God says. Man can be a liar. Man can teach different things. That's why we're not just, just sucked into some denominational or church structure in the sense that, oh, all, you know, half of our truth comes from church fathers and the other half comes from the Bible, like the Catholic Church teaches, that they have an authority that's that's mixed, right? They have authority. Yes, there's some authority in Scripture, but there's also an authority with the Pope and with God, you know, and they're able to pontificate and say things that are going to be accepted by the church as truth. We don't believe that. All of our source of faith, all the things that we believe in come strictly from the Scriptures. It strictly comes from the Bible. That is what we believe in, and that's what we're teaching. So what, there's a lot of ways. It is, this is a very in-depth subject. So if there is anyone here this morning, and maybe you're not settled on this topic, maybe you've heard about this before, maybe you haven't heard about this before. I don't know. But there's a lot of different ways to prove reasonably why we believe what we believe. Okay, why we believe the King James. James Bible is true. One, I'm only going to focus on one way this afternoon. And one way of determining what's right and what's wrong is going to be very simply by putting them side by side and doing a comparison. You can see that there are differences just when you take, let's say, well, the first thing you have to ask yourself is, did God even preserve his word for us? Or are we just left guessing? Do we even know? Do, do we have access to God? You know, that, that's kind of a fundamental core belief to have before you even start looking at, well, which one is right? And one of the, the main passages that I get that from, there's, there's multiple, I'm not going to get too far into this, but in Psalm 12, verses 6 and 7, the Bible reads, The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times, Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. So the Bible itself says that it's God's job to preserve His own words from this generation, which is the generation all the way back when David was penning down the Psalms, when the, when, when the word was literally given to him by inspiration and he spake the word of God, from that generation even forever that those words were going to be preserved, that God is responsible for that. Because look, if it's just solely, completely, 100% only left up to man, I could understand the argument that would say, well, man screws things up. That things are going to change over time because there's going to be errors and man doesn't do everything perfectly. But if God is the one preserving it, then how could there be error? Think about, think about a person being led to Christ. If it's just a man and God's not involved, how is that person ever going to be saved? If I just go out in my flesh and I, and I, and I try to, to instill faith in somebody and it's just me and there's no work of the Holy Ghost, there's no work of God involved at all, I'm going to come up empty every single time. Because the power and the salvation is not me. It's through God. Yet God uses human instruments. We're imperfect, but the, look at the great power that comes through God when He uses people. Just as much as God uses people to preach the gospel and for other people then to receive faith and get saved, He also has used man throughout history to preserve His Word. He's been involved in that, in that preservation, in the transcriptions, in the translations. It is completely possible, and that is actually what we firmly believe here, and that He has preserved.